Hello everyone, welcome to Zoonosis with Joy. I'm Joy, and today we're going to be talking about skin allergies and our impending ecological crisis. Impending as in happening right now. There is an announcement at the end of the video, so stick around. What are skin allergies and what causes them? Skin allergies include eczema, food allergies, atopic dermatitis. They all revolve around a central concept of an immune overreaction to environmental stimuli that causes signs of skin inflammation uh, itching, skin infections, that kind of thing. 15% of dogs and something like 14.5% of humans have skin allergies. In cats, we don't know the exact numbers because research tends to just extrapolate from dogs to cats, even though cats aren't dogs and there's a whole thing I can make about that as well. Um, but it's very common and it seems to be becoming more common, especially in conditions of modernity and in our contemporary society. So, Really, when we think about skin allergies, we often think of it as a nuisance, as something that, you know, we can treat and mitigate, but it's not a huge problem, right? Well, we have to think about, you know, the direct impacts of skin allergies. Obviously, it leads to infections and it leads to disease that way. We can get bacterial skin infections or fungal skin infections because allergies weaken the skin barrier. This leads to, of course, antimicrobial resistance. We use antibiotics to treat skin infections and these bacteria rapidly evolve resistance to these antibiotics. So there is a risk there. There's also the risk of chronic inflammation leading to increased risk of heart disease and cancers. And we also have the psychological impacts of skin infections and skin allergies. These are incredibly painful and irritating conditions. They lead to psychological distress in humans that can further exasperate anxiety and depression. In dogs, it actually reduces their ability to learn and remember commands. So this makes sense both from the actual physical distraction component as well as the inflammation reduces learning and memory. So there are quite a few things going on there that make this more than just a little nuisance, but actually a life altering sort of disease um, pattern basically. Now, what causes skin allergies and where do they come from? So obviously there is a component of skin allergies that is genetic. We know that certain genes in humans predispose them to getting skin allergies. And we know that certain dog breeds, for instance, are more predisposed to developing skin allergies. Labradors, for instance, have a 50% incidence of ear infections. They get recurrent ear infections over the course of their life. We know that German Shepherds have specific genes that predispose them to developing skin infections. And we know that certain breeds are going to be more predisposed to skin infections. We think like poodles and French bulldogs, but there's a whole bunch of different ones there. Exotic cats and purebred cats are more predisposed. And we know that certain humans with uh, a protein or in their uh, skin layer that can actually cause them to be more predisposed to having skin allergies. And you know, allergies, eczema, food allergies, atopic dermatitis, all these different things, they, we kind of use those terms interchangeably there. But there is a huge component of this that is learned, acquired immunity. We acquire our immunity very early on in life. In fact, some of our immunity is going to be uh, through the placenta. Obviously, there's going to be some in humans. Uh, the maternal uh, antibodies go towards the, uh, um, the infant, and they can use that to train up their uh, T cells going forward. Um, but there's also some of that immunity that is acquired um, through the birth canal. Obviously, you're going to be exposed to bacteria and other um, pathogens and antigens in the environment that way, as well as the fecal microbiome from the mother immediately following birth. I mean, um, think about where and what happens during childbirth, and you can understand why we would be exposed to things early on. And also the early childhood environment. We know that children living in rural environments are less likely to develop allergies than those living in urban environments. And children that are more likely to be outside in their childhood are less likely to develop allergies than those living more inside. And the same thing implies with animals. So there's going to be some uh, uh, environmental components there too. This isn't something that can necessarily be altered simply by changing our lifestyles. Um, obviously, you know, certain things like the genetic factors in dogs, those are pretty easy to mitigate by opening up the stud books, making sure that we are eliminating um, closed gene pools for breeds so that we bring in new genetics and allow animals to have some of that hybrid vigor. Um, for humans, of course, that doesn't necessarily work and, you know, it doesn't help the humans and the animals that are currently living. Um, and it also just only decreases the risk. Really, to prevent the 
um, skin infections and skin allergies from becoming a major issue is to radically alter the ecology of our society to better suit our needs. This isn't going to be a simple thing at all. Um, some of the things that I've read suggested and it means, you know, um, local organic food production, um, having more public green spaces where people can spend lots of time outside, um, places where people can interact with nature, and, you know, having lots of human, animal, and wildlife contacts. I mean, there's going to be have to have a huge amount of change to this, and this isn't necessarily something that can be done simply through, you know, uh, legislative processes. This has to be done both on the grassroots level and on the super government level. So there is going to be a lot of changes. This they and they don't necessarily have a clear path forward, and there isn't a lot of good things to help us there. And this is something that's affecting us right now, and it is getting worse. So we need to think of ways, and we need to brainstorm ways that we can help adapt our immunity. One of the other things I'd like to plug is a book called uh, Decolonizing the Diet. European diets, uh, both humans and animals, we feed our animals a, a modified European diet, basically. It's, it's very high in starches and high in red meats and that kind of thing. These are pro-inflammatory diets. These are diets that are going to predispose animals to having chronic inflammatory conditions, such as skin allergies. And this is something that um, really has gone into depth in the book with regards to how the um, epidemics that swept across the Americas following the Spanish conquest and the European colonization, etc., colonialism in North America and South America um, relates to food and food systems. We need to have new food systems that prioritize uh, anti-inflammatory regimes. So food for thought at this point. I think that there needs to be quite a lot done here and the research is only in the beginning stages. This is a huge issue and a huge topic. Now for the announcement, I actually have a course coming up uh, and it is called On Courses. It's going to be done over six sessions, two hours per session. Uh, there's lots of readings involved. So we're going to be talking about the ecology, the history, trade, warfare, and all sorts of things related to horses. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be pretty intense. Uh, if you are interested or know someone who is interested, um, there is a sign up link. It's with the Mimbri School. It's something that I've been working on for a long time and I'm super proud and excited about it. Shorter video today, but if you do have any thoughts about um, skin allergies or um, that sort of thing, feel free to type that out in the comments. Um, any thoughts for future videos, I'd also love to hear that. And uh, thank you and have a good one. Peace.